While immensely powerful in the dark side of the Force, Supreme Leader Snoke was certainly no Sith. Of course, this was well established after The Force Awakens, but we do now have express confirmation within The Last Jedi Visual Dictionary that Snoke accepted that the Thousand Year Sith lineage starting with Darth Bane had been undone. However, while Snoke was no Sith, we also learn in the Visual Dictionary that Snoke has some important connections to the final Sith Lords in the Bane lineage, Darth Sidious and his apprentice Darth Vader. I'm talking about Snoke's ring. The Visual Dictionary points out two important pieces of information, one connecting the ring to Sidious and the other making a connection to Vader. We learn that the band is made of gold and is etched with glyphs of the ancient Duartai while the stone that sits atop is obsidian, originating from the catacombs beneath Vader's castle on Mustafar. Let's start by looking at the obsidian portion of Snoke's ring and its connection to Vader. Within the Rogue One novelization and visual guide, we learn that Darth Vader's dark, monolithic castle on the planet of his greatest defeat was constructed out of obsidian. This allowed the central tower of the castle to act as a conduit for the immense power of the dark side that lay beneath the surface of the planet. And I believe that this is the true importance of Snoke's ring regarding the obsidian portion of it. We know that Snoke did not obtain the obsidian from the castle itself, but from the catacombs that were underneath the castle. As we learned in issue number 5 of the most recent Darth Vader comic series, Deep beneath the surface of Mustafar rested a locust for the dark side of the Force. This is why Sidious sent Vader to Mustafar shortly after the events of Revenge of the Sith. Vader was to use the dark side there not just to bleed his kyber crystal so that he could use it within his lightsaber, but to use the dark side to reclaim himself, strong, unbroken, and powerful. Ultimately, Vader finds an ancient Sith temple, bleeds his kyber crystal within it, and would build his obsidian castle atop of the wellspring of dark side energy. I believe that while the connection to Vader is important, the connection that the obsidian in Snoke's ring has to this ancient source of dark side energy is just as important. Just as the obsidian towers of Vader's castle acted as conduits for the dark side, it could very well be that Snoke is using the obsidian originating on Mustafar to act as a conduit as well, further channeling the dark side and feeding his power. As interesting as the connection is between Snoke's ring and Vader, I believe that the connection to Sidious is even more fascinating. Again, the gold band of the ring is etched with glyphs of the Duartai. The Duartai have shown up as an important component to Sidious in both the former legends and the current canon, specifically through the four sages of Duartai. You might remember seeing these Bronzium statues in Palpatine's office during his reign as Supreme Chancellor of the Republic. These four statues represent the four sages of Duartai, and Sidious was very fond of them. The four sages of Duartai, named Brata, Sistros, Yanjan, and Feia, were a group of philosophers and lawmakers who operated in the earliest days of the Galactic Republic, and wielded immense influence on the Republic's earliest laws. The dates can get a bit confusing in the current canon, but if we're talking the Galactic Republic, we can assume that these four sages operated roughly 1,000 years before the events of the prequel trilogy. These four sages were considered to be extremely controversial in their beliefs and the effects that they had on the Republic's early days. Although we don't yet know the reason for this controversy within the canon, turning to legends can help to clarify a few potential reasons. For example, one of the four sages named Sistros was thought to have been pandering to and indulging the demands of the masses to enact ends that benefited himself. On the other hand, the sage Brata was looked at controversially due to their belief that the dark side of the Force should be studied. Again, we can't yet say why these four sages were controversial in the canon, but we can say that Sidious was very fond of them. Following Order 66 and Sidious' rise to Emperor of the Galactic Empire, he moved his office from that scene in the prequels to the Imperial Palace, the structure previously known as the Jedi Temple. The statues of the four sages of Duartai were so important to Sidious that he moved them into the Imperial Palace with him. There was a great scene in the novel Tarkin that briefly touches on the statues and the value that Sidious places in them. 
Having entered Sidious's new office in the Imperial Palace, Tarkin immediately recognizes one of the statues, telling the Emperor that he remembered it from his former office. Sidious tells Tarkin that the statue is that of Sistros, one of the four ancient philosophers of Duartai. More importantly, he tells Tarkin that he keeps the statue for its sentimental value, not for the material worth of the statue itself. Clearly, Sidious values the statues for their important associations to these ancient philosophers and lawmakers. And now it appears that Snoke too values a connection to the Duartai as well. I believe it's important to point out that while the ring is connected to Vader and Sidious, it's interesting that Snoke finds value in those items that are considered ancient. The obsidian from beneath Vader's Mustafar castle could very well be connected to the ancient Sith temple and the dark side locust there that predated the Darth Bane lineage. Further, the connection to the Duartai may also predate the Bane line of Sith and represent knowledge from before the Galactic Republic, further acknowledging that Snoke's origins may be from a time centuries before the events of the sequel trilogy. But let me know what you think about Snoke's ring and its important connections to Sidious and Vader down in the comments section below. Also, do you think that the more important connection is with the last Sith in the galaxy, or the ancient origins of the Duartai and Obsidian beneath the surface of Mustafar? You can find us over on Twitter, at SWReadingClub, and if you enjoy our work, please think about supporting the channel through Patreon for access to exclusive hangouts and book discussions. Thank you for watching everyone, and as always, may the Force be with you.